recorded live in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Trivial Warfare. More than just a pub quiz, Trivial Warfare is your gateway to a worldwide trivia community. Join your hosts, Jonathan. Take these broken wings, it's Mr. <laughs> Mister. Broken wings. Oh, Son of a beasting. Chris. Oh. I thought it was about a tree falling. Oh, I thought I was talking about a person going down. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Carmella. My vodka's telling me that no, they didn't. And the answer is yes, they were in Whoa. 1854. You lied to me. <laughs> ben. Jonathan was literally, he was literally about to break things. He wasn't kidding. He was about to get it from his desk and destroy something valuable. (laughs) And the rest of the Trivial Warfare Army for another week of fun and games. Now here's your host, Jonathan Oaks. Welcome back to another episode of Trivial Warfare. We are the podcast that takes the pub quiz out of the pub and brings it home to you. My name is Jonathan, and I am here today with Aaron Barkley. Hello, Aaron. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. I'm here today with Nick Groves. Hello, Nick. God, Aaron always sounds so chipper in the morning. I hate it. Yeah. You know, I I realized when I saw the matchups today, before we introduce our guests, I, I saw the matchups today and I realized... This is the most sarcastic of our groupings. So the, the, the trio of Nick, Aaron, and Jonathan are the group where if there, if you add one more person or one less person, it's not the same. But with the three of us, we are the most likely to be sarcastic with each other, I think. A rarefied air I find myself in. What are you talking about? You lead the ring. <laughs> All right. So we do have some fantastic guests today, and I want to introduce them to everybody. Albert Thomas is with us today. Hello, Albert. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Lee Guffey is with us today. Hello, Lee. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And Shaz Iqbal is with us today. Hello, Shaz. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. All right. So I want to get to know all of you a little bit better. We're going to start with Albert. Albert, can you tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself? My name is Albert from Glendora, California, which is just east of uh, downtown L.A., I'm the uh, director of R&D for an ice cream company here in the uh, L.A. area. And mm. so something fun I would say was probably that I can make just about any ice cream flavor I want. What is the worst ice cream flavor that you've ever concocted? E- oh, I've ever concocted? Oh, boy. I was going to say anything that's not our brand. Uh, yeah, see, no, <laughs> I don't want the easy way. I want you to tell me, like, oh, we tried to mix this fruit with this rubber tire, and it turned out terrible. <laughs> That toothpaste and orange juice combination was <laughs> mediocre at best. <laughs> you know, we, we actually tried to do a, uh, I wanted to do a uh, uh, waffles and syrup kind of a, a okay. ice cream. And so I figured, hey, you know what? We'll just blend in some uh, some Eggo waffles into this. And uh, the texture was something like uh, ice cold vomit, essentially. So mm. that probably would not sell well. But, uh, but, yeah, but the one guy who wants it really wants it. Yeah. Really wanted it. Might yeah. I suggest a Canada McMaple bacon ice cream flavor? A Trivial Warfare tribute. Yeah. Because it's a really good name for a maple bacon ice cream, which might not be terrible. I will get working on that. I mean, Jeez. that would that would be, I don't know, that'd be a highlight of our lives, I think. I think, the, the, the I think we, could, uh, we could collab on that. Yeah. I would love I that. that. Like a the really Trivial good Warfare Hall of Fame, and he's saying if you can name an ice cream after him, that would be the highlight of his. Career. Not even after me. That's that's after a thing <laughs> no, that Carmella created. Right. I I would. Uh-huh. Love Is that. there yeah. a call in line? Can I make suggestions? Oh geez, for ice sure. cream flavors, <laughs> Albert, you want to say no? You want to say no? <laughs> I, I'm I'm wide open. Let's go. Uh, what is what is your favorite ice cream, by the way, as an R&D guy for ice cream? Not not brand. What's oh. your favorite flavor? We did one called a Tropical Winter Cake. Uh, so that had uh, cake pieces, muscovado sugar, a uh, tropical uh, pineapple sauce. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome. So we're looking forward to bringing that one back. God, it sounds good. Jeez. All right. Very cool. Well, glad to have you here today, my friend. And Lee Guffey, tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Lee. I am from Fort Myers, Florida, currently originally from New York. I am a director of sales support for a rental car company, so not nearly as exciting as ice cream. 
And also, I listen to these, and I realize I'm a boring person. I don't really have a ton of fun facts, but I'll lean into my nerdiness, and I'm a I'm a huge book person, and I just add tons to my Goodreads list, and mm-hmm. I have like 970 books that I want to read. So, Ooh. yeah, I got to well, get on that. But What's your favorite type of book that you enjoy reading? I lean into a lot of the psychological thrillers, but then I'll throw in some nonfiction, some memoirs here and there, but... Okay, so this is interesting. So if you're a psychological thriller book person, are you also a true crime podcast person, or is that different for you? I have listened to some true crime podcasts, but with the pandemic and doing partly remote, I don't listen nearly as much because I listen in the car, so I kind of really just listen to trivia podcasts now, but I have done some true crime ones. That's a smart move. I think you're making a good choice. Honestly, I It's definitely I can't. more interesting, you know, than... Yeah. And not as morbid if you're going through a toll booth or something when the toll collector hears what you're listening to. <laughs> yeah, but it can still be funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't handle the true crime stuff. It makes my jaw hurt. It's like, oh my God, this is scary. There's a threshold of what I can take, like the really, really intense ones. I can't really, but. Yeah, my, my boss has murder clients sometimes, so I'm just like, I'm good on murder. But I, I listen to a podcast regularly where a pair of comedians out of Chicago discuss uh, Alex Jones, which means that often Alex Jones is playing in my car. And I have been at stoplights with the windows down and someone has walked by my car and I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm not li- I'm listening to them talking about him. I'm not listening <laughs> to him. So now I'm much more mindful of where I listen to things. It makes a difference. Well, Lee, it's great to have you here. And Shaz, welcome. Tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. Thank you. So I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I am a gastroenterologist up here. So Albert, as a GI doctor in Minneapolis, I know something about frozen vomit and its texture. Oh. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, Shaz, you, you laugh, but I actually started getting into ice cream because I left medical school. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You made the right decision. <laughs> Something fun about myself, I am closing in on 500 unique board games played. Whoa. I'm at 492, so these last eight hopefully will uh, come soon in the next uh, month or so. You need to uh, so many questions. You need to make friends with Dan oh. Lundberg. He can send you some originally designed games, or or you can buy some originally designed Love games. It. I don't want to sign him up for, yeah. for that. <laughs> hey, his, his, the game, the game that them. he did most recently that I bought a copy of is Gorgeous. I can't remember the name right now, but it comes in the gorgeous green box. Uh, like an is it the one with all the flowers? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. With all the Hate hand painted. Yeah. It looks like it's hand painted. It's, it's it really, really does. beautiful. Love it. Yeah. Love a good production. For sure. Makes a difference. It's only $11,000 a copy. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, that's the going rate penny. with inflation. Worth everybody. Uh, so, we're going to have a great time today, and we are going to get that great time started. With Warm It Up, Chris. It's time to warm it up. A trivial warfare today. And there's only one person who can warm it up for the TWA. And that's Chris. And sometimes Jonathan. All right, Aaron, take us away. All right. So I have this idea. Calgon today. What? I said you're Calgon today. Calgon, take me away. That's a reference most people aren't going to get. Mm-mm, well, I'm sorry I'm older though. than you guys are. <laughs> I, I got the reference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I knew it was a reference. That's all I got. <laughs> so I had this idea last night when I was lying in bed in a group chat with a bunch of people discussing the whatever hundredth speaker for the House vote. Um, we're recording this on January 7th. And I reprised a round that I did during the 2020 presidential campaign. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the, a white guy name. And you're going to tell me if this is a member of the House of Representatives or the name of a white guy that I just made up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to be very bad at this. <laughs> if you are like me, I had the, the the vote rolls on kind of in the background because I found it very soothing, like not from an existential standpoint, but just from an auditory standpoint, it was fun to listen to. So I heard some of these names and now I'm stalling because I lost my spreadsheet. Steven Stevens. <laughs> yes. Nope. Literally, that's a <laughs> Miller from California, Miller from Georgia, Miller from mm-hmm. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> so this has I've ever, been- ever been in the house. I'm currently in the house. Oh, currently. Currently. In the house. All right. People are currently in the uh, house. Uh, uh, point of order. There is not currently anybody in the house. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I don't I don't even know my own state um, representatives, so this is going to be <laughs> pathetically random for me. <laughs> 
All right. Well, we're not going to start with you. We're going to start with Jaws. Sweet. You get Jerry Carl, C-A-R-L. Jerry Carl. Carl. Mm, this sounds like it's a made-up white guy that's supposed to sound like Jerry Carl. I'm going to say made-up white guy. <laughs> he is represented from Alabama's first district. Dang it. <laughs> he was actually made up, though, by his mama. Well, <laughs> yes. all, all names are made up. True. Is it a name their mom made up or a name that I made up is actually right. the question you're being asked. Lee, you get Garrett Cast, Cast with a K. Garrett's so common these days. I'm going to go with it's made up. It is made up. Mm. Garrett, with sweet apologies. mama Cass. <laughs> <laughs> Albert, you get Michael Bennett. Oh, 100%. Has to be real. It might be, but he is not a current member of the House of Representatives. <laughs> 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 Nick, you get John James. How many Jameses were on the roll? Shingle. Uh, I don't think there's a John James. I'm going to say made up. He is out of Michigan's 10th district. Oh, you're terrible at this, Nick. Obviously. <laughs> Jonathan. Yes. You get Oliver Wortham. W-O-R-T-H-A-M. We've had a lot of made up, so I'm saying they're real. He is made up. Damn it. Don't Nobody paid attention. You know I have to. I don't know any of the right answers. <laughs> There's only it's one also, thing for me to do. It's not fair. Everybody stopped paying attention after the R's. Nobody listened to the W's. I stopped paying attention <laughs> when I was 10. <laughs> yeah. On Tuesday. All right, Jaws, back to you. You get Richard McCormick. Uh, that sounds like vaguely familiar. I'm going to go with he's in the house. He is out of Georgia's 6th District. Nice job. He also is a wonderful spice dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Chili powder is excellent. My boss is from Maryland. We just have Old Bay stuff all over the office. Mm, that is fair. Lee, you get Noah Johnson. Noah Johnson. I'm sticking with Noah's a popular name, and you made that up. I did make that up. Good job. Lee Very is good. Two for two. Albert, you get... Jonathan Jackson. Oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go real. Illinois first. Wow. Yes. Nick, you get Chad Lawson. Shows you how much I wasn't paying attention through all. How many names? It's 15 times through times 430 something names. What's uh, interesting is this name 000. is super familiar, but that doesn't mean that it's from the House right. of Representatives. <laughs> right. It could be whatever she used the inspiration for to create the name with. I'm going to say no self-respecting person would not would vote for somebody named Chad. So I'm going to say it's made up. He was hanging at the time. <laughs> uh, not in that Chad way. Lawson a, Jeez. <laughs> Chad Lawson is a gym buddy of mine. He has not, to my knowledge, been ever, ever been allowed to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Did you check, though? Because there could be. It's 435 he's not, he's not in the house. All right. <laughs> Jonathan, you get Ian Clements. Ian Clements sounds fake. It sounds like a wonderfully made up name. I'm saying it's fake. It is a wonderfully made up name. How Yay. kind of you to say so. Yay. Shaz, you get Michael Simpson. <laughs> Good old Mike Simpson. Sounds like a sounds like a Nevada rep. Let's go with the rep. He's out of Idaho, not Nevada, but he is a rep. This or that that <laughs> reminds are. me. I was so I roll around TikTok and Instagram and I like comics. And there was a comic and it was I don't know, it was like from a show or something, but her bit was that she was talking about one of her good friends whose name was Mike Litteris. And oh, no. this bit was really funny. I mean, it's like you see, he goes through his whole life and she's like, he has the hardest time making reservations in places. Yeah. Right, and this is I a funny joke. And but then somebody makes a suggestion, and they're like, "Well, couldn't he just go by Michael?" And she says, "No, that just makes him sound sassy." It's like right. my name is, it's, I'm Michael Litteris. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael this Litteris. Was, this was a great bit. Shout out to this comic, whoever they are. This was yep. a. I was laughing really hard. I saw that this morning too. Oh, it's hysterical. You? Yeah. Lee, you get Neil Dunn. That's N E A L and Dunn with two N's. That sounds familiar. Familiar. I'm going to say representative. That of Florida's second. Wow. Oh, he might be your. I, I was going to say, is he your? I, I did these before I knew where anyone lives. It sounds like you were going to play on words for Neil Down. 
His name is Neil is Dunn. Neil Dunn. Oh, oh, yeah. No, that's his name. Albert, you get Jack Erlinger, E-H-R-L-I-N-G-E-R. Mm, I don't know Jack, so uh, I'm going to say <laughs> it is made up. <laughs> it is made up. We are on a roll, y'all. You yeah, made up Florida. the last name Erlinger? That's wonderful. <laughs> I, yeah. I, well, what I did is I Googled, I literally Googled generic white guy names and then just sort of cobbled them together. And then he came across mine and just right stopped. Now. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. She just took right. the uh, the fifty through one hundred on the PGA Tour rankings. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Nick, you get Brooks Kepka. No. <laughs> you get Eric Swalwell. S W A L W E L L. He's a representative. He is. He's out of California's 14th. You were the only the only one so far who's like not been guessing. So good job. <laughs> Jonathan, you get Harold Rogers. Made up. Kentucky's fifth district. Mm, dead blabbit. <laughs> Chaz, you get Lucas Jeffries. Are there multiple Jeffries? I'm gonna go with no. That was an intentional red herring. He is not. Hakeem Jeffries is the one whose name you may have heard shouted over the last several days. Loudly and by many people. <laughs> yes, in the style of Leroy Jenkins, which is my favorite thing. <laughs> Leroy, Leroy Jenkins. Hakeem Jeffries. <laughs> <laughs> someone, and the first rep who did it, someone called him out on Twitter. He's like, we're here. We might as well make it fun. Right. Lee, you get Gregory Meeks. Gregory Meeks. I'm going to say that is a representative. That is out of New York's fifth. Albert, you get Wiley Nickel. So there's only one nickel. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say it's real. North Carolina 13. What a name. Right. Yeah. I, I think I might vote from just on premise. Nick, you get Samuel Edwards. There's two Edwards. I can't remember the first name of either one. I'm going to say real. Neither one of them is Samuel. Okay. I don't, well, I don't think. I can check real quick if you want. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> you don't have to check. Jonathan, you get Paul Ranny. Mm, I don't know if you're using a Ranny as a made up name, so we're going to say it's real. It is a real name. That's my boss. He's not a representative. God bless it. <laughs> Shout out to your boss. <laughs> I panicked because I apparently only did 19 and I needed another one. <laughs> that is all I have, but you guys got most of them. Congratulations to all of the smart people who actually knew things in warming up, Chris. Well done to all yes. of you. <laughs> all the listeners at home, that last week of torture was worth it because you got trivia knowledge out of it. There you go. <laughs> that's that's the only reason to do anything, really. Right. Yeah. I fair. think for sheer comedic value, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it does lead to good memes. Well, that is your warm it up, Chris, for the episode. Thank you, Aaron. If you love Trivial Warfare and you want more of it, I have more of it for you. Just go to TrivialWarfareArmy.com and sign up as a sergeant or higher, and you will get access to all of our old episodes, and there's a lot of them out there. So you can do that today at TrivialWarfareArmy.com. I want to let you know that you can play along with today's show. Go to your app store or play store, download the Triviamatic app, hit the Play Now button, and use this code 963 963- 084. That's 963 084 to play along with today's game. With all of that being said, today's game is going to be fantastic. It's going to be Nick and Albert versus Jonathan Lee and Shaz. Aaron is hosting, and it's time to play the game. Play us. Oh, yeah. Y'all know what time it is. This is Mr. Literature himself cordially inviting you to the game this is six rounds of trivia goodness three questions per round every right answer gets you 10 points in the middle we'll take a pause for the cause and ask a midpoint question worth up to 20 juicy points after round six you can wager any or all those points you've been building up and take a shot at the final round it's a series of theme-based questions we call the gauntlet it's just that easy, baby. But this game ain't gonna play itself, players. Let's get it on. 
I've nor- I, I'm used to introducing my rounds, like with the categories, the rounds, these don't have those. They're just questions. So we're just going to start with round one. Question one category is music in government. In December of 2021, music streaming sensation Olivia Rodrigo performed her breakout hit for NPR's Tiny Desk series at the Glendale branch of what government agency? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. Is that the name of it? Pretend those letters say because I was. And we are locked in. All right, cool. So I was just, Shaz, you immediately had the idea that uh, that kind of, I know I was leaning towards, too. You said DMV. And my question is, is the Department of Motor Vehicles the agency, or is it a function within a larger agency? And that, I'm not sure that I know. Yeah, like, is it the Department of Transportation or something? But I'm pretty sure it's a DMV. I can picture the show. It's a great show. Yeah. Uh, And I, I see the lines, and, you know, those are seared in everybody's head because you've spent hours and hours and hours waiting in those lines. I don't think we have something like better that feels better than DMV. And I feel like it would feel really bad if it is DMV and we say something else. Yeah. That's, that's, a how, good that's point. what I feel. Lee, are you in agreement? I'm in agreement. I'm pop culture music recent is not my thing. So I'm all good. All right. Well, we're going to say that she played or performed driver's license at the DMV. And Nick and Albert, what did you say? We also knew that the song was driver's license and the only governmental branch that makes sense within the context of the song would be the DMV. So we locked in with DMV. It, it was the DMV. I'm glad you guys didn't overthink that. I don't know what the parent organization, the DMV would be. I don't know either. There, it's gotta be. They even have one. It's gotta They're be the department of transportation. I would have fought against us going with that because department of transportation would be like a cabinet, not a, yeah. Not an agency, you know? I mean, right. it's a it's a department. Exactly. Well, so is the Department of Motor Vehicles. Right. <laughs> Round one, question two is in movies. 76 years before James Cameron wowed us with Titanic, a silent film version of what 1872 novel opened in New York City. It was the first movie that was filmed underwater, but probably not as far underwater as you might expect. I think I got it. Yeah, let's lock that in. I think that's right. All right, we're locked in. Lots of things jumped out at me. The time frame, the the years, uh, Aaron's little clever the hint there at the end, not as far as you would think. Albert, I'm I'm thinking it's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Vern wrote it in the 1800s. It makes sense for a film adaptation. It's not, you know, they didn't film it 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, so it's not quite as far as you would think. What do you think? Yeah, the only thing I, I'm having trouble with is the only version I can think of is the famous Disney one. So if it's 76 years before 1999 for Titanic. I think it's just one of those early, you know, how many movies can you name from the 1920s? Three, five, right? Yeah, just just about, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think this is one of those things. They, they, uh, you know, a book adaptation of a movie makes sense. Yeah. Just the fact that we've never heard of a 1920s version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, I don't think is a knock against the answer. Yeah, it really it really fits it cool. Have you considered the Little Mermaid? They were also under the sea. That's under actually that sea. wouldn't be a terrible thing cuz well, right? when was the Hans Christian Andersen version? You know what? Now that Jonathan interjected into our debate, I think maybe we should change our answer and no, that's a terrible idea. Oh jeez. Oh, well. <laughs> they were under the sea. Yeah, no, I I think that's it. I was just thinking, you know, uh I was trying to go through my uh, my head through uh kind of 1950 style uh, it came from the sea or came from the Black Lagoon, that kind of stuff. But the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, I think the clue just really fits it. So I, I'm with you. Okay, we're going to lock in with 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Okay. And Jonathan and friends, what did y'all lock in with? Everybody typed at the same time. Lee, do you want to give our, our answer and our limited thought process? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think we had much of a thought process. The The last hook of not as far as you might think led us also to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It brings me great joy when the hints do their job. It is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Wonderful. Excellent. Yay. Great. Category is vocabulary. What word, worth four points in Scrabble, is in the name of a number of plant fungal diseases, a couple of towns in Europe, a scotch and drambui, and something Salad Fingers was really, really, really into? What? What? (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Who is Salad Fingers? It's a cultural reference. You wouldn't My understand. God. I didn't either. Did you say a scotch in Drambuie and Drambuie? Scotch and Drambuie. And so four technically points in. Scrabble? Mm-hmm. 
make me use my paper. I need an answer fairly soon. All right. We are locked in with an answer that is pretty obvious when you think about it. You can ignore them saying that. Nick is usually full of beep. This is a doozy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not we're not really coming up with much right now. So fungus, fun, fungal diseases. I'm having a hard time even thinking of them. I don't think I'm fully awake yet. But like um, like herpes zostra. It's a virus. Is that that's the virus? That's not fungal. Yeah. That's right. So, You're a doctor. Come on, doc. Give us some diseases. <laughs> so yeah. So when you're thinking of like a fungal or bacterial diseases. Something that would have be in both would be things like emia, fungemia, bacteremia, itis, osis, like onychomycosis, which is like finger related diseases. But is osis in European towns? Would salad is salad finger really into osis? Like, what does that even mean? It's a good point. <laughs> I don't even get point. the salad finger reference. No, I don't all, either. So. Salad fingers is like a cartoon that's like super. Super creepy, like kind of slender manish, like really long green fingers. So what is he I, like? Is he a fan of mushrooms? Is there a, <laughs> what are we talking about here? I'll, I'll need to come to an agreement, or oh, if one of you say Lord. something, I, I we have to say either itis or osis. The only thing that's a four letter word, right? I I think I mean I think it's either a four letter word or it's or four, a four four point Scrabble word. I it's mean, definitely it's definitely right. a four point Scrabble word. If you want to say that we went with the itis, we can. <laughs> we'll take the itis for three. <laughs> we don't have anything. Sure, sure. We'll go with itis because that's obviously the right answer. <laughs> I'm not going to say yet. Nick and company, what did you guys come up with? Uh, this was all Albert. Oh, yeah. So blame me if I get this wrong. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I, I got absolutely none of the clues, and that's why I asked you for the scotch and drambuie, because that's actually one of my favorite cocktails. That's a rusty nail. So the only thing that could make sense to me is just go with nail. Nick picked it out that it was uh, you know four points on Scrabble, so right. that was our best guess. There are nail fungus diseases. Yeah. Right. It seemed to hit on a lot of points without actually knowing anything about the subject matter. So the discussions were fun because the team with the doctor on it was listing all these technical terms and um, the other team was discussing drinks. Y'all were halfway there. You got to the correct cocktail. It is a rusty nail, but I needed the other part. The answer is rust. How, oh, we were oh. so close. How oh, does so it close. how does it work? How do the, how does it fit the clues? I don't understand. And I just want to learn now. Sure. And this came from a round that I did on early aughts YouTube channels. So four points in Scrabble, a lot of plant fungal diseases. For example, rust, stem rust, brown rust of sugarcane, brown wheat rust, cedar hawthorn rust, cedar kins rust, and so oh, on. Not oh, human diseases. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got yeah. it. Okay, plant, that helps. Plant. She said she said yeah. plant fungal diseases. Oh, you said plant? Oh, yeah. I didn't hear that. I, I missed that part. <laughs> and there are some towns in Europe that are just called rust. Scotch and jambu is a rusty nail. And salad fingers, you, you got it. It is this creepy, and it it has held up in that it continues to be creepy. He had a thing for rusty spoons. He liked to run his fingers oh, along the rusty spoons. I was thinking yeah. spoons, and I was like, oh, that's too many letters. I should have said that. <laughs> After the first round, y'all are tied at 20, and Orange Cat has 10. Round two, question one, is in sports history. Sport, sports. When when he stepped off the mound for the final time in 2013, Mariana Rivera became the last player to wear what number? It had been retired league-wide since 1997, and it was the first time the league had honored a player in that way. Hold on, I have to reach for a hammer. Get that hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Did you want to use yours too, Nick? We could do stereo. <laughs> yeah, we we could count one. down our <laughs> hammer usage now. Jesus, somebody should be a train whistle, Amazing. for God's sakes. Three, two, one. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right, I think we can. Uh, I'm, we're not even looking at the chat. Do y'all just want to? Do y'all no, yeah, do the answer gonna... here? Three, two, one. This thing. Uh, yeah, Aaron, Albert, can you count us down. Go ahead for the three, two, one. All right, in three, two, one. Forty-two. 42. That is the answer, both to life, the universe, and everything, and also this question. Yeah. Good job. I'm glad we had to have that moment. I got to have that moment <laughs> together. <laughs> Round two, question two. Sports history. Sports. In, 1940s, yeah. Sports. in 1947, Jackie Robinson broke baseball's color line when he began playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Eleven years later, Willie O'Ree did the same for what NHL franchise? Also obligatory hockey question. 
All right, we're we're gonna lock in. Okay. We don't know for sure, but I think the going with one of the six original franchises is great. I was messaging that I'm a very bad Minnesotan. I don't like hockey at all. My winters are all basketball, but it does. You mentioned Boston, and for some reason, that's like tingling for me. Is it my spidey senses? Yeah, because I think that there was some discussion a year or two ago, a year or two ago in the NBA about the history of racism in Boston, mm-hmm. and they mentioned. I think they mentioned that the first black player in the NHL was a Bruin. I didn't. I don't remember the name. The name is not really ringing a bell, but th- for some reason, that is like connecting for me. Yeah, that's better than what I'm bringing to the table. I was. I was anti-Boston. I mean, from childhood, but other than that, I was anti-Boston in this answer because of the history of racism in in Boston sports teams. But if you have a connection that makes you think that that is a logical choice, then that's much stronger than just an anti-Boston sem- sentiment. I I feel like we should try to override the the natural Jonathan anti-Boston sentiment here. Mm. It's a strong thing to override, though. There's a it, lot. It is. It is. I I feel the waves of force emanating from my pores. All right, I, we're going Boston. Okay, they went Boston. Nick and Albert, where'd y'all go? So we had a similar conversation. Probably one of the older teams. Probably a northeastern team because of the you know racial implications. We also went with hatred as the source of our answer, but we went with Boston's hatred of everything New York as the basis of it, saying we're not going to let them go first on everything. Also, his name was O'Ree, and a good Irish boy playing in Boston makes all the sense in the world. So we went with the Bruins as well. That was a confusing walk around your answer there, because I could have sworn that you said you had chosen New York. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 no. New York had the first black baseball player, so Boston's not going to Oh, let that's deal. what you were saying. Oh, uh, okay. Boston hates him. Shaws, you were so with not... me, right? It was yeah, like, what I was is like, he saying? I was, like, I was like, okay, we answer something different. All right, let's see what it is. Yeah. <laughs> For all the reasons you guys said, it was the Boston Bruins. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Yeah, good work. I was too busy parsing what Nick had just said. To... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Nick starts talking, and there's just this white noise around everyone's head. <laughs> Everybody stops paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Round two, question three. The 1920s movie version of the life of what fictional Spanish libertine was the first to use the Vitaphone sound system, which synchronized sound effects and music to the film. Stories about the title character's seductive ways go back to the 17th century and include a 1797 opera, a poem by Lord Byron, and several stage and film adaptations up to and including a 2013 movie set in New Jersey. All right, go ahead and post that one in the chat. Yeah. Yep. Please. <laughs> I threw out Cyrano de Bergerac, Lothario, and Don Juan. And Cyrano de Bergerac, de Bergerac's a French name, has to be. So I want to exclude that. Uh, Lothario, I don't know if that's Spanish or Italian. I would have guessed Italian. But Don Juan is definitely Spanish. And I think, I think there's, I think it's like, there's an opera or something pronounced Don Juan. I, I don't know where that comes from exactly, but I've heard that corrected before. George Santos was in that one. <laughs> is there is there a gendered libertine is not a gendered term, correct? I don't think so. I mean, Don Don Juan is really the only. I think there was a Johnny Depp. John Don, Don Juan, Juan is definitely movie. an opera. I, yeah, I can give you that yeah. much. I had a, I had a complete bag of nothing, but if. I, uh, with is, is, is there some movie Don Juan de Marco, or am I just making that up and just pulling that out of nowhere? I have no clue. Mm, I don't know that one. For some reason, that just popped into my head. Also, it sounds like if if you feel good that there's an opera, and I feel good that he is a Spanish lover, then we should guess Don Juan. All right, that's our answer. And Nick and Albert, what you guys looking with? At least for me, the uh, the movie was the the clue. You know, I just thought of uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt in that 2013 Don Juan movie. Uh, so that was an instant get for me. But uh, Nick, did you have any other ideas past that? We no. lost it pretty quickly, actually. Yeah, no, I, you threw out Don Juan. I said that's exactly what came into my head. I am generally in the camp of if you have a gut reaction to something, don't question it because you can talk yourself out of it more easily than not. The only thing I have to add is Don Juan DeMarco uh, Lee was a Johnny Depp, Marlon Brando movie in the 90s. So okay. that is a real Careful. thing. You didn't make it up. <laughs> okay. I, I just, it popped in my head and I was, I have no clue because, you know, the 1990s and 2013 are the same. Fair. Uh, in, the, in the future, in the past. They really are. Totally fair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, once again, you guys took all my flavor text. It is Don Juan. Would also have accepted Don Giovanni because that was the name of at least one of the operas. And as to your question about whether Libertine is gendered or not, I don't know if it is or not. But at the time when the word was in common usage, women weren't allowed to do things that would have made them Libertine. So it, I think it usually refers to men. I don't know what a Libertine is. Kind of a kind of a. Oh, it's a like a male. Wh- Fancy, fancy free, do what you want. Oh, you know, no, I of, didn't know that town. at all. I kind thought of it was like going to sort of more personality. polite. Yeah. So he was just a gigolo everywhere he goes. People know the part he's playing. I thought this was going to be some kind of freedom fighter. <laughs> <laughs> like a liberty, a liberty fighting, yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't know the definition of the word at all. That's a very judgmental dictionary <laughs> term, to be honest. That's true. You all swept that round. Good job. Round three is, I'm playing with something a little different here. I do theme rounds a lot in my game when you answer eight questions before you hit submit. This is a theme round. But you're going to answer each question. So I think it will get the questions will get harder, but the answers will get easier once you figure out what the theme is. We'll see how this works. If you hate it, I'll only do it when Nick's playing. So (laughs) if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying that we will hear all three questions before we give answers. Nope, it's going to be standard 1Q1A, but when you get to the third question, you will have you will be able to use information from the previous two questions to come to I see. Okay, thank you. I believe on this show we call it a gauntlet. No. Oh, is that how we're supposed to no, do the gauntlet? No, that is not. <laughs> no. Okay. okay, good. Surprise, surprise gauntlet. All right. Round three, question one. Category is vocabulary. From the Greek words for entire and drawing, what word, which has a very different meaning in modern society, originally referred to a document written entirely in the creator's handwriting? About 90 seconds. All right. We're locked in. So can you guys think of a word for like whole? Like W-H-O-L-E? Like what, a Greek word meaning all or something like that. You know? Pan. So it would be pan, pan, right? So like Pangea, the whole Yeah, okay, earth. I like that. So pan and then drawing. Lee came up with the, the word manuscript, which the script part definitely fits drawing from a Greek origin. My, my memory of Latin origins is much better than Greek, but I, I'm, I'm almost positive script is like the, the Greek but you were saying that drawing. manu would be hand, and that wouldn't be entire. But, so, but manu is hand in Latin, so I don't know what manu is in Greek. So, yeah, mans manus is like a is like a Latin root for hand, but it might be something completely different in Greek. The problem is, is that it doesn't have a very different meaning. Manuscript versus entire drawing; those you're still drawing something. It's still close. I need an answer. Mm, I don't have a better answer right now, so. All, all I have is arguments against. I don't have anything that I can argue for, which doesn't help us at all. So I guess manuscripts are best answer. We'll do that. Okay, and I think so. Okay. And Nick and Albert, what are you looking with? We bounced around to a couple of different things. The first thing that came to my mind was sketch. And then when Aaron reread the question, Albert correctly pointed out to me that we're looking for two different words, the word for entire and the word for drawing. So your suggestion was autograph, because that's the only thing that I can think of out of this bag of nothing. Right. Auto, auto self, meaning whole, meaning entire drawing, graph, writing, self writing, entire drawing. I don't know. We took a shot in the dark, but it was the gut reaction again. So we went with it. Ten points to Orange Cat. Nick and Albert, y'all were on the right track with graphy, graphia meaning writing. Sherry is hand in Greek. The word I was looking for, whole, entire, holistic, holograph. Oh. Oh. Wow. Y'all all all kind of tap danced around it. Yeah. A a holographic Mm. will is one that is in the creator's own handwriting. That's why the word was in my head. Legal term. (laughs) <laughs> that's yeah. neat Sorry. though that's a I cool like that. one yeah that's no i like that a lot i have no idea mostly because i didn't bother to look why it means what it means today like now you think holograph you think of like roy orbison inexplicably still touring right you don't think about someone writing things down it's just the way language changes uh, i have so maybe a question that should, yeah speak speaking of wills looking at the name of the chat that we're in albert and i with with you as a monitor in i i named it tw410 and then oh. you put <laughs> Two skull and crossbones after that? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> why? I, 
<laughs> because I needed to be because Jonathan and Chaz and Lee's chat is also TW four ten, and I need to be able to distinguish between the two. So the Fair. skulls is the one with you in it. Yeah, but you also have, you also have, you, you also have big pirate energy, Nick. Right? Yeah, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> why not flowers or puppies? Because you're think in the chat. She's trying to tell us that we're dead to her. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Round three, question two, if I may. Your category is botany. What twining vine, common in the mid-Atlantic as well as most of North America and Eurasia, is considered invasive in many areas and has parts that are edible both to people and hummingbirds? A common ingredient in Chinese medicine, it can also be smoked or made into a tea. You can smoke anything if you try hard enough. <laughs> I have an idea. That's what my idea was. I, I think we can lock that in. I'm oh, wow. Cool. Down, down with it. Go for it. I'm good for locking that in. We are locked in. Beautiful. Nailed there we it. go. <laughs> All right. That's exactly how we say it on this show. <laughs> it is from now on. It really is. <laughs> Albert, name all the types of vines you know. Go. <clears throat> Red. Red. Red vine. <laughs> this is delicious. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, that's about it. You wrote in the chat, Ivy and Clover. I said over and over. Um, <laughs> saying it. There's your red. Red vine and clover. Over and so over. I'm, I'm trying to take this from the Chinese medicine and the smoke tea part because I'm, I'm not getting the hummingbird part. I mean, hummingbird, you'd think that they're going to have it has some kind of a flower so you can get the nectar. Is honeysuckle a vine? Boy, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know that we're going to come up with this. Does it fit the theme at all? What, what what do we have? We had any discuss? We haven't had any discussions on a theme. Do you want to go with the Tupac vine? I am mad at you. I don't. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Let's let's uh, mid Atlantic. I mean, it's there's poison ivy all over the mid Atlantic. That's a whole thing. That's definitely a vine. Clovers all over the mid Atlantic. That's also definitely a vine. There's honeysuckle all over the place around here. That's probably a vine, given how it grows and the way it looks. <laughs> edible to hummingbirds there are hummingbirds all over the place eating honeysuckle that's that's what i got mm. clover i'm just thinking clover honey but i'm just trying to think if a clover is, is actually a vine i i don't think so right it's it's just i mean no, what are, it's, are cloves what are cloves cloves aren't made of clover are they <laughs> I don't, there's no way that's, that's true <laughs> They can't, they can't be right. Anytime, yeah, honestly, you know what? Anytime people say, "Oh, you're really good at trivia. You're really smart," I play back <laughs> sections of the conversation. The <laughs> rabbit in Sophia the First is also not made of clovers. Yes, very. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, I, I, I don't know, Albert. Uh, it, it's it I, your call. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I have I no idea. You said you said honeysuckle. I mean, you're you're in the mid Atlantic. I, I just I can't. I, I know it's going to come to us, but I'm just. I'm just naming stuff I can see out my window. Poison ivy, what honeysuckle, about clover. Creeping <laughs> creeping something? Oh, what the heck is the name of that thing? You should pick one fairly but, soon. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to get it. Let's let's do uh, honey, honeysuckle then, like you suggested. Okay. All right, we're going to say honeysuckle. Jonathan Chaz and Lee, what would you say? Chaz, I think you were the first one to say it. Yeah, I don't know if it has another name in English, but when... When I think of an invasive vine that's origin from Japan or I guess maybe China too, uh, it's kudzu every time. Okay. I have never tried to eat kudzu. I don't know if you can, but I have often, especially as a child, eaten honeysuckle. Is that the answer? Which is the answer. You, you, no, can, no. you can de- wait, wait, wait. You can definitely eat kudzu. Wow. You can you can they you can yeah. eat the roots and you can eat the flowers. Okay. Um, I only ever see it on the highway, so I didn't I didn't know that. Well, how about that? Huh. That is de- depressing. That that we that, lost no, to that. Disagree. Extremely uh, 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 heartening. <laughs> Extremely I, I pressing. Right. Yeah. Very. Pressing. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I was like, I was like, could, honeysuckle is not another word for kudzu. Is it? <laughs> no, I, I, I was no, like, I was it's like, definitely it not. Kudzu. It's all over the, U- the southeastern U.S. You can eat it. It's from Japan. It's from China, and it's an invasive vine. It has to be kudzu. <laughs> I I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know at all. How about that? Um, I can tell you that uh, cloves uh, come from the clove tree, believe it or not. Uh-huh. Uh, and <laughs> it's in like Indonesia or something like that. Yeah, um, I, there's very little resemblance between a clove and a clover. I'm just, you know, there's got to be something in there, though, right? Yeah, well, hey, 
Uh, no, honeysuckle. That's that's a big surprise for me. I, I just honestly, I think maybe I stopped thinking as much de- in as much detail when it said invasive. It's like invasive vine beep kudzu. There right, we go. Right. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's all I need to hear. So yeah, no, um, that's, that's a miss for us. By the way, love red herring. Love the fact that Joel has replaced the the beep with just saying beep. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Round three, question three category is world religion, which Hindu festival is sometimes more frequently called the festival of colors in the Western world. It celebrates the divine life of Radha Krishna and was appropriated by color run organizers everywhere. Yeah, I got this one, Nick. No, not this one. Do you? Okay. That's light. Yeah. That's the one I was looking for. This one I know for sure. Yes. If it's wrong, I will leave. (laughs) All right. No, don't leave. Don't leave. All right. No, we can lock in. I'm with you. I was that was gonna be my next guess, honestly. I realized no, I named the wrong one. You guys are locked in? Yeah, we're locked in. My wife and I, about maybe six, seven years ago, we went to a festival of color in uh, South Pasadena as uh, hosted at a school, and they would give you like uh, it was almost like eggs stuffed with uh, with powder. And so the idea is like you would just kind of smash it on you or somebody else. and uh, that powder gets everywhere, including your ear canal. And so for weeks after that, uh, my wife had red and blue coming out of her ears. So that's a very distinct memory for this. It's uh, it's Holly, I believe it's called the Festival of Holly. Yep. And okay. uh, uh, Aaron, to go with your your theme, and honestly, the reason we went honeysuckle for the second answer was because it was the only answer we could come up with that was an H word to go with holograph. So that was what we thought the theme might be, and that's why we went with honeysuckle. Okay. And Jonathan Chazen Lee? Yeah, so uh, the first thing Jonathan typed was Diwali, which I believe is a festival, festival of, of light, light the, the victory of light or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we put mm-hmm. we put holy, H-O-L-I. Yes, and um, Nick kind of clued in on it. This this category was called ho- Hose in Different Area Codes. All the answers started with the letters H-O. <laughs> it is holy. I like how, I like how holy day is not a holy day, but it is a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. And I, I did this backwards. I apologize. I should have apparently put these in the opposite order because y'all did way better on the back half of the round than the front half. So, sorry. After three rounds, Jonathan Chaz and Lee have 60. Nick and Albert have 70. Orange Cat has 20. That brings us to the midpoint. Boo, Orange Cat. Stop taking our points. <laughs> he only doesn't know this much. Your category for the midpoint is January. Although, I don't know if this is going to drop in January, but whatever. I am going to give you the ingredients and the source of the name of four classic cocktails that contain gin. You are going to tell me the name of the cocktail. That's it. That's the round. You guys ready? (laughs) You're so excited. Erin's energy is through the roof today, guys. I'm having a hard time, like, holding her back. She's going to explode through the screen soon. You know what's really funny is that I'm I'm now in a handful of chats with Aaron and and watching like listening to this game unfold is just like scrolling back through the chats and the topics of conversations that we've been <laughs> having in them. <laughs> so Aaron is- recently has been learning to bartend and making her own very unique and special drinks at home. So I'm guessing that's the origin of this. It's not recently, actually. That's been most of my right. adult life. I mean, it's wild you say that because technically true, but honestly, I pulled the I pulled my questions from old games that I asked when I hosted. So that it is maybe maybe there's some subconscious something going on. But no, my friend Callie actually reached out to me and she was like, "Hey, I bought a bunch of new gins. You're the only person who drinks gin. Let's do a January party and do like a taste test." So that's why this was top of mind, but also because I probably drink too much. Anyway, question one, number one, equal parts gin. Campari and sweet vermouth, named for a count who asked for it to be made. Number two, one ounce gin, half ounce lemon juice, half ounce simple syrup, and topped with champagne, named for the thing you feel like hit you if you drink too many of them. Three, three parts gin, two parts lemon juice, one part simple, four parts soda water, named for the last name of the guy who invented it and the glass it is served in. And four equal parts gin, lime juice, green chartreuse, and maraschino liqueur, allegedly named because it was the final cocktail invented before Prohibition began. All right, let's do those four then. We'll, uh, we will lock in. The first one I'm pretty sure uh, is Negroni. I like Negronis, and uh, it definitely has the bitterness, and it definitely has those ingredients. The second one is the one that I'm 
Yeah, I'm debating with you, Nick. When I think of a, a mule, I usually think that it's going to have uh, ginger beer in it. Right. That's where I'm having an issue with. The third one, we agreed it's a Tom Collins because it is served in a Tom Collins glass. Right. That's, uh, that's a given. And then uh, the last one is definitely the last word. I've had a few of those as well. It's the second one that's driving nuts. So uh, I, I'm, I'm relatively sure that Gimlet has champagne in it and gin. I mean, a Gimlet is a it, gin drink. Gimlet, Gimlet is going to have lime juice in it, though. Not lemon juice. Mm, no, I, it's juice. typically. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure that's a lime. I mean, here's the other thing. Jonathan drinks mules heavily. Uh, Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it's been. I'm going to stop you right there before you insult our boss anymore. Uh, it's, it's been about five minutes, so finish it up. Uh, I, I I don't know, Albert. This you're the bartender. I, Go for it. Yeah, I, the I, the mule is the only thing. I'm thinking Harvey Wallbanger, but that's not that's not this. Uh, it's not the correct recipe. What hits you? Truck, wall, right. brick, rock. Yeah, I, I think I think we're overthinking it. I, th- I think mule is gonna. Uh, so go uh, ahead, mule. Yeah. So so. Yeah, we'll do num- mule for number two. So we've got Negroni, mule, uh, Tom Collins, and the last word. Shaz, why don't you talk through it? Actually, why don't we have the people who thought of the answers each time give the answers? So the first one, what was the first one? Who said that Negroni. first? Yeah. Well, and Shaz, yeah. I've that's made, just it's my favorite cocktail. So Is it really? I've made yeah, Negronis love, with Aaron, so that's a gimme. Good choice. So many. The second one, Lee, I think this was you. Feels like you got hit by a bus. We said a greyhound. Oh, look at the look of recognition on their faces. No. <laughs> Wonderful. That's incorrect, though. But yes, a that's gr- good. A greyhound is grapefruit juice. Whatever. Yeah, Don't care. Is. You got hit by a bus. We're going with it. <laughs> the third one, I think, was mine. I've heard of a Collins glass. I felt like this was likely to be a Tom. I've also made a Tom Collins, and this seems similar. So I went with Tom Collins. And then the last one... Shaz, I think this was you. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had no idea what was in this. I just knew that it's a gin drink and it fit the kind of prohibition, the the last drink made. And so we said last word. So our answers were Negroni, Greyhound, Tom Collins, and last word. Watch the second answer be like dump truck or something like that. Right, yeah. <laughs> Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> so you guys, gross. I would not drink something called the Jersey Turnpike. Have you you've never uh, yeah. had the Jersey Turnpike? <laughs> Jersey Turnpike is when you take the bar rag, you clean off the bar, and then you squeeze it into a shot glass. Oh, uh, I've not heard it called that. That's yeah, the no, worst I don't thing want, I've I don't ever heard. That. <laughs> I was correct. So you guys agreed on three of the four, and you were correct on three of the four. I, Jonathan, I forgot that I I forgot the Negroni night. Weird. Tom Collins <laughs> and Last Word. <laughs> I'm not surprised last at word, all. Which is, <laughs> it's personally my favorite cocktail is the last word so the one that you feel like you get hit with is called a french 75 oh um, yes of course is, 75 caliber bullet is that a oh so you, okay <laughs> you you guys you guys picked up on the hint but didn't apparently drink at different establishments than me i was at a french cocktail bar a couple weeks ago sitting at the bar and i just was watching him make French 75 one after the other and I was like that's really aggressive and he looks at me and he goes just wait because it's like 4 o'clock he goes just wait and about half an hour it's going to be all espresso martinis down the bar and it was and it was terrifying (laughs) it's like the red vodka for adults Mm -hmm. (laughs) after the midpoint Jonathan Shaz and Lee have 75 Nick and Albert have 85 Orange Cat has 25 round 4 there is no theme category to question 1 round 4 name them and shame them After they were publicly called out for their undeniable role in the opioid epidemic, the name of what American family was removed from seven exhibition spaces at the Met in New York in 2021? The family's probably not going to face any liability for derailing humanity, and the Met sure isn't going to return the antiques that are probably definitely stolen, but hey, it's a start. I was feeling sassy when I wrote this question. Yeah, obviously. (laughs) I'm clueless, Shaws Lee. So if you want to go with that suggestion, then I'm down with it. Uh, I'll ride your yeah. coattails. Yeah, I'll ride the other coattail. So sweet. <laughs> Shaws is is strongly walking forward while we're dangling behind, clutching his coattails. <laughs> we're locked in. Oh, he's so huh. good at saying that now. I, I, I love I, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you so much for locking in, so that I don't have to see Nick mistype again and again. And again, <laughs> and again. 
But he 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 says uh, he quits. I mean, sorry, he quits. So uh, so I think we're okay. <laughs> I legitimately wrote. <laughs> it's, <laughs> It's, I said, wait, is she looking for the family name or the company name? Albert goes, family. I said, okay, I'm pretty sure it's Sac- Sackloid w- W-R, shoot, uh, S-A-C-L-K-E-R, shoot, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so, what is your answer? Because the two things you wrote down look I don't, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> no, uh, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the Sackler family. family. Okay. Yeah. And other team, what did y'all say? Jonathan, I think I made a boo-boo. Oh, do you need to go wipe? So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think I did not listen to the question very closely because when you said pharma company implicated in the opiate crisis, my brain immediately went Purdue Pharma. And I didn't catch the, we're talking about the family name. So we locked in with Purdue. Oh, oh no. Woo. What is Nick doing? Nick is showing us that he said Purdue and then said, sorry, that's the company. It's the Sacklers. All right. of which is, is true. And the correct answer is Sackler. How about that? And Sh- 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 I did exactly what you did. The first thing I <laughs> yeah. thought, pharmaceutical company, scandal, family, it's Purdue. Got to be. Mm-hmm. The former Sackler wing at the Met has an entire Egyptian temple that just made its way to New York somehow. It's really cool, but it doesn't belong there. Why did the <laughs> Sacklers name their company Purdue? The next time I give an answer that rhymes with ooh, we need to just nix it. It's not Kudzu. It's not Purdue. No matter how, how sure I am. What? Streaming network with a green logo. <laughs> Spotify. Yeah. Round four, question two. Famous animals. In 1914, a Canadian veterinarian purchased a black bear cub before heading off to war and named it after the town where he grew up. When his company jetted off to France, he gave the bear to the London Zoo, where a young boy and his father would visit it often. That bear's nickname is still part of the zeitgeist today. What town, now city, was the veterinarian from? I will paste that in the chat. Hmm. I thought you were going to ask a question about this bear that is part of some country's military. (laughs) He's like a ranking lieutenant now. I can't remember that story (laughs) anymore, but. This is not I, guess, that, I thought that's where it was going to. You did? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, me then. All right. We're going to lock our answer in. All right. So he's okay. Canadian. Uh, Aaron, for clarification, when you say he gave the bear to the London Zoo, do you mean London, Ontario or London, England? London, England. Okay. Where a young boy and his father would visit it often. The bear's nickname is still part of the zeitgeist today. What town was the veterinarian from? So he was from a town... In Canada, not England, not France, because he's Canadian. So we're looking for a Canadian town that is now a city. It could be Hamilton. Oh, that's better. That, but mm, it seems good. Yeah. Why are y'all y'all have been chatting, but they locked in. I, I, oh, was, yeah. so, I was still typing that as they were chatting. Mm-hmm. So in the zeitgeist today, so Paddington and Winnie both fit, right? Winnipeg. So there is a there is a Winnie Bear that is named after Winnipeg, but I thought that was the one you were referencing. I thought that was the like the bear that was enlisted in the Canadian Army. I don't remember the story very well. But the big question with this though, uh who wrote who wrote um Winnie the Pooh? It was J. M. Barry. Oh, J. A. A. Milne. A. A. Milne, thank you. Peter Pan was J. M. Barry. A. A. Milne. Uh so A. A. Milne. There's a part of this question. He gave it to London Zoo where a young boy and his father would visit it often. There's no point to having that in the question. So that's a clue. There's there's no point in saying young boy and father would visit it often unless that was meaningful. So that makes it feel like that could be an author, right? And that author, I don't know when Winnie the Pooh was written, but I do like the idea of this kid who visited this bear being A.A. A. Milne. I do know, because I've seen memes on Reddit, that Winnie the Pooh is just losing its like trademark or copyright or anything. So if that's good for 100 years, it would have been, he would have written them in... twenty. I, guess, I think 27 is the year that's losing copyright this year. Right. Yeah. So I don't know it if... It. Yeah, the, I put Paddington in the chat because somehow I feel like I heard, and I could, again, be making this up, that Paddington wasn't named after the station, but the city where the bear was from. I mean, Paddington is also a good bear name, 
But it says the bear's nickname is still part of the zeitgeist today. That's, that, that, so if the bear was Winnipeg and its nickname was Winnie. Winnie. Whereas if the so bear was Paddington, we don't call him Patty the Bear. Man, Aaron has some good questions. These Doesn't are she? layered. She's, she's, she's really good. So we, we need to say what town now city. I think we should answer Winnipeg. I agree. Lee, are you with us? I'm fine with that. Let's go. All right. It. We're going to say Winnipeg. Okay. It's Nick and Albert. Yeah. Similar, uh, similar conversation, right? We two brought up Winnie the Pooh and then also uh, Paddington and Yogi even. But uh, hey, boo -boo. yeah, I mean, we just we thought Paddington just kind of fit the idea. So we just There's went a, with Paddington. Yeah, I have a I have a Pavlov with London bear equals Paddington. So uh -oh. I hope your Pavlov's I think, wrong. I, I think your answer is brilliantly deduced and given how Aaron yes. writes questions far more likely, yeah. but we'll see. You both had similar conversations. You both said Paddington, you both said Winnipeg, and then uh, Nick and Albert stopped just a little bit too soon because if you had reasoned it out, you would have come to the conclusion. I was like, I swear to God, if you guys talk yourselves out of this, I'm quitting the show. Like <laughs> you're, you're there. You said it right away, and those are all the right reasons. There was also a very overlooked hint. His company jetted off to France. The Winnipeg Jets are oh, oh a city. deep cut Bravo. clue. <laughs> 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 No one, I don't think anyone noticed that but me when I asked this question the first time either. But yeah, the answer was Winnipeg. And I love that story. I think it's a really fun little story about like, why, why is this bear named this? And he's so in the zeitgeist. So now you all know, I have no idea about the lieutenant bear. But yeah, Shaz, when you're like, Winnie's the lieutenant bear, I'm like, no, no, he's not. Come back. So good job. That was, that was awesome. a ride. That, that question rocked. Yeah, that, that's, that is a really wonderful question. Yeah. So Nick, you're going to have to rewire your brain. Sorry. Yeah, obviously. It's not the answer's not always uh Zoroastrianism. <laughs> Round four, question three, category is old movies. This question comes to us kind of from uh, my friend Kezia, who told me about this guy, and I thought it was a cool story. Son of the Sheik was the last film starring what Italian born silent film star and cultural icon who died in 1926 at the age of 31. His premature death caused mass hysteria among his fans. Over 100,000 people swamped the streets of New York during his funeral, and his girlfriend threw herself onto his coffin as it was being lowered into the ground. I should have said swarmed, not swamped. Oh. It's not a hint. It's just, I can't you read. You have meow meows? Do I? I'm. Like oh, I think we have meow meows over here. So here's a little combo. <laughs> meow meow. <laughs> All right, we're locked in. Uh, both both of my teammates know stuff. Uh, yeah, go for it, Albert. Because you know, Italian-born silent film star who died at the age of 31 in 1926. Pass, hard pass. <laughs> so nothing about it. You joked about if I know 1920s movies, but I actually really do love silent movies. So, you know, we could talk about uh, Buster Keaton. We could talk about Charlie Chaplin. But we could also talk about one of the biggest Italian actors that I can think of from that time. And that's Rudolph Valentino. So that's uh, once you said Italian, that was like the big twist for me. So that's and that's the only thing I can I can even remotely deduce. Right. So I have Italian no idea when he silent, died. Or nothing else. Italian silent actor is a Pavlov for you for Valentino. That's never worked <laughs> out badly for us. I say we go with it. Okay. Have you tried Let's Paddington? Go Paddington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hear silent film Italian. It's Rudolph Valentino. It is Rudolph Valentino. Points all around. Hooray. Well done. That was They, they came in with confidence, and I'm like, thank yeah. God, because I don't know jack about this era of anything. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, honestly, visually, I was jumping out of the way of, of Albert's answer. <laughs> <laughs> like that's in my head. I was scrambling and falling down backwards to get out of the way. Pretty wild though. Like this guy died and the entire world lost their minds. He was, he was very pretty. I get it. Round five was inspired by my trip to the pharmacy museum in new Orleans last February. Before you do round five, could we get yep. a score update? Oh. Mm -mm, you got to guess. You got to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Chaz and Lee have 95. Nick and Albert have 105. You both each got two in that round. So no movement on the scores. Round five, category is Aaron went to the pharmacy museum. Question one, what portmanteau, which is common today in grocery store checkout lines, originally referred to round compressed medicines? It was a trademark of the Burroughs Welcome Company, gradually came to be associated with other compressed things, and today has nothing to do with medicine. 
I encourage anybody who needs to to rewind, hit the rewind button and listen again. No shame in, in double checking. Yep. Oh, I have an idea. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, you want to go with that? No? I like it a lot, actually. I like it. All right, then uh, we're going to lock in. I'm super excited for Nick and Albert to have this conversation on the mic. Uh, really? <sighs> yeah, come on. Well, okay, portmanteaus for compressed medicine. Calmed. Calmed. <laughs> Albert said checkout line. We were trying to think yeah. of portmanteaus related to grocery stores. Turnstile. Cart. What, which, what, how is cart a portmanteau? Or are you just throwing out grocery store words? Yeah, basically. I'm just trying <laughs> to think what. Oh, 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 oh. Aaron's gonna laugh because I think I know exactly what it is, and I'm I'm being an idiot. <laughs> okay. What if I said something that's like a pill comes as a tab, and then what if I said it's a tabloid? Oh, oh, <laughs> I like that, and it's grocery store checkout lines. Yeah, I, I I'll, yeah. I'll take that tabloid. Right. I love 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 it. Go. <sighs> All right, let's uh, let's lock that one in then. Tabloid. Shazley and Jonathan, what'd y'all say? Boo. <laughs> boo, boo on you. Say boo. That sucked. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I searched around in my mind for what I see in a checkout line. A tabloid came immediately, and I'm like, oh, tab. That's like compressed medicine, like a tablet. Okay, cool. We'll say tabloid. And everybody was on board, so that's what we did. Yep, the news in a tabloid magazine is also compressed into basically just a headline and a picture of a kid that looks like a bat. It is tabloid. <laughs> there we go. I was dying for y'all to make turnstile into something. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they're struggling with it, it's I'm so filled with hope. We're only like we're like five down, right? Ten, I think. Ten, ten, I think. I think ten. ten down? Yeah. How did we lose five points? We were oh no, it is ten. Never mind. Yeah, okay. Round five, question two. Medicine. Originally sold as nerve food in eighteen seventy six, what was among the first mass produced carbonated beverages in the United States? You can still get it today, and the recipe is largely unchanged. The name, however, has gone from meaning just a type of medicine to now also a synonym for, well, someone who's had their nerve food. You don't think that's it? I don't think that's it. <laughs> Ooh. It's a blind spot, not a blonde spot. Good Lord have mercy. I was going to take issue with that. <laughs> Sounds like it's just a blonde spot for me, idiot. Oh, that is Freudian right there. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with it. We can, we can lock in y'all's answer. The first thing that immediately came to mind for somebody's had their nerve food uh, is also what Paul Rudd called Yolner, uh, and that would be Jonathan. That was my guess. Mm-hmm. Albert then suggested tonic which I thought was a much better answer. Uh, it is a carbonated beverage. It doesn't have too many ingredients, so the recipe is probably largely unchanged to this day. It has multiple meanings. It seems to fit all the boxes. I'm good with that if you are. Yeah, I, I can't think. Uh, it wouldn't be seltzer or anything. And then tonic, you know, you've got catatonic, and so tonic is definitely a state. So it makes more sense than seltzer. Sure. But yeah, I also I like the simplicity of the like it's just tonic it's to make sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Right. Yep. They locked in with a simple answer. Lee or Shaz? Who who said it? When y'all said it? What was y'all's answer? Um, I remember this drink because I made a PowerPoint once in medical school where there's the image on this box is like a fake doctor and it's like pointing at you like you need this and the drink is Moxie. So we locked in with Moxie because that's, you know, if you got nerve, you got Moxie. Yep, Straight out of the 1920s, the answer is Moxie. How about it? Nice. Never heard of it. Tie game. (laughs) We could have guessed a thousand words and not come up with Moxie. I had never even heard of it. Like 1876 is so early for a carbonated drink. I was like, I've never heard of this. Tonic seemed like a no brainer. I know. I'm like, okay, like Dr. Pepper, Royal Crown. (laughs) Yeah, that was discussed. Exactly. My old roommate John loves Moxie because he's weird, and occasionally, like bottles of it would pop up. I think it's easier to get in New England than it is in Virginia. So occasionally, he'd go home and he'd come back with bottles of Moxie, and it's like a sarsaparilla flavor. Like it's not good. It tastes like medicine. <laughs> sarsaparilla is not bad. Tastes like root beer. It is. 
it just didn't. It tastes like like root beer medicine. Like mm. like you were masking something unpleasant with root beer to try to get kids to drink it. Oh, now I want to buy some ice cream and root beer. Does it still have that doctor like pointing at you on the cover? Maybe. Can I also, can, can I say that I'm very unhappy with the fact that that's like the fifth medicine question of this game with the doctor on the other team? That seems like... <laughs> <that's something else. laughs> I think we're like two for five on those, so... That's, not, yeah. that's less relevant. I, I, I usually get medicine <laughs> questions wrong, by the way. Right. I overthink them all. I do, the too. Time. Most doctors mm-hmm. do. I do, too. Yeah. Time out. We had plenty of alcohol questions, and you called Albert a bartender earlier, so... <laughs> feels even. <laughs> That's, I think five. we're just getting a very deep look into Aaron's personal life with all of the drugs and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a very deep for that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Round five, question three. Aaron went to the pharmacy museum. You used to be able to purchase leeches for use either at home or with the assistance of a non-doctor. Though not formally doctors, the sidewalk and storefront advertisements for what profession contained some red, which indicated that they would help you with your bloodletting needs. Sondheim really just took it to its logical conclusion. Yeah, I've got meow meows. We can we can lock in. Lee, you're right there with me. You're, in fact, in front of me. All right, we're locked in. So, if you can't see the poster of uh, Fan of the Opera behind me and Les Mis to my other side... I'm pretty sure that this is uh, this is a uh, fairly famous barber play, or musical rather. Lives on a street, one might think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's on a street. Yeah, okay. most, can't most remember. people, most people do. Okay. Uh, other team, Jonathan Chaz and Lee. Jonathan, I basically typed at the same time. Leeches, letting it's it's a barber. It is a barber. Woo. Okay. Very exciting. Because after the fifth round, y'all are tied at 125. Let's go. I (laughs) freaking love it. It's a good game. (laughs) Round six is from a category I did about a bunch of authors whose names I get confused. What I learned from this experience is that writing questions about people that confuse me doesn't help me to stop confusing them. But you will understand what I mean in just a second. But the, the categories are just authors. Aaron gets confused. Question one. Upton Sinclair, who is neither Sinclair Lewis nor John Updike, was an American political activist, writer, and nominee for the governor of California, who is best known for what 1906 socialist novel? Once again, high five. (laughs) Love that. We're going to walk in. I thought he was the journalist and oil was the was the book, but that's not what you're thinking. What what book do you do? You know the title? Oil. Oh, it was literally called oil. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the. It was a scandal. It was a publishing of a scandal. Oh God, I can't remember. Ah, see, so when I so Sinclair Lewis is the guy with the rabbits, right? I don't know. That's the, uh, that's the connection. Okay, is that so not John that's Beatrix Updike? Potter? <laughs> <laughs> you're saying Watership Down? Mm. Is that what you're saying with the rabbits? No, no, okay. I know what he's saying. No, okay, yeah, the rabbit guy, right? Look at the rabbits, George. Look at the rabbits. Uh, I think Upton Sinclair. See, the thing that the socialist part is what I'm I'm tripping up on. But when I think of Upton Sinclair, I think of the jungle, which is the expose on the meatpacking industry. OK. The, and uh, was oil an expose on the oil industry? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've just never heard of oil. And when I know 100 percent that Upton Sinclair wrote the uh, the, the jungle. Oh, I don't well, know. Oh, I, I know. Don't... I know that. I just don't. No, 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 no. It's just that I don't know if it came out in 1906. I don't know if it's social knowledge. I don't know if he was a nominee for the governor of California. You know the name of a 1906 Upton Sinclair novel? How are we not already? No, 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 no. I know a, I know an Upton Sinclair. Well, again, if if you know un and and you're sure of it, then I say we go with that because everything I've got is speculation at best. Okay. No, I, I know 100% Upton Sinclair wrote The Jungle. Otherwise, oh, well, I'm going to be in yeah, trouble. And he's the one with the rabbits. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, Let's do it. Know. Let's do it. Let's say it's stuff. a jungle. There you go. <laughs> so it, it, just for the clear, John Updike's the one with the rabbits. So Rabbit Run, Rabbit, blah, blah, blah. The, the name of his books all have rabbit in them, or lots of them have rabbit in them. So yeah, we, we all said the same thing over here. Upton Sinclair is Pavlov for the jungle for most of us. And so we also said the jungle. Though I think, Nick, you are also correct. 
in a different i think he also wrote oil which i believe there will be blood is like loosely based yeah off of. that's okay uh, but that's but oil that. oil i don't think is as like as much of like a socialist like calling so much as like calling out capitalism it, it's not pro-socialist yeah. it's anti-capitalism <laughs> Right, got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yes. there will be blood. The, that's the that's why I have that association. Good. And in in oil, according to the Wikipedia article I just pulled up, Sinclair dramatizes the oil boom years through the story of Bunny Ross. So we're back to rabbit. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> Wild. It is um, the rabbit. It, it technically, yeah, but the answer was the jungle. Hooray! So they are the same person. Same, yep. Written by the same guy. I had heard of Oil in Passing, but I think like I think it was Jonathan who said Upton Sinclair in the Jungle is, you know, kind of what, what people what yeah. people do. What's really fun is we named all the people the people's names that it sounds like, but then the the jungle, then you could throw Rudyard Kipling in there because you also right, have yeah. the jungle book. Jungle book, yeah. Which oh, is yeah. different than the book about the jungle. <laughs> yeah, but if you're a kid and you, you want the Jungle Book and you get the Jungle, you're in for a very unfortunate yeah, surprise. It's a wildly <laughs> different story. <laughs> yeah, and now you're a vegetarian. Round six, question two. Sinclair Lewis has absolutely nothing in common with Upton Sinclair, nor does he have anything in common with Earl Sinclair, the patriarch of a family from a TV sitcom that ran from 91 to 94 and was produced in conjunction with Jim Henson Television. What was unusual about Earl Sinclair? Yeah. I got this one, Nick. You see what I wrote? Not yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're locked in. Yeah, I think we got this. Yeah. Okay. I was all ready to talk about the a Sinclair Lewis novel, but no, not they going to get that they opportunity. Let's turn it Albuquerque. Earl Sinclair Earl. I think they were dinosaurs. Earl. Dinosaurs, yes. I was going. I was going with Family Matters at first. But I was trying to figure out the Jim Henson part of this and the uh, years, and uh, yeah, I think he's a dinosaur. The Jim Henson connection definitely works there. Mm-hmm. That sounds good to me. I'm I'm good with it if you guys are. I like it. All right, we're locked in. With Earl is a dinosaur. He was also not the mama. <laughs> oh, I stole it from you, Nick. Yep, Albert. The good news <laughs> is you're now an adult with access to adult money. So if you want to buy Robbie's Letterman jacket to wear around, you can do that. Oh God, yeah, please. Wow, you know their names. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, uh, I typed in "not the mama." He typed in "dinosaurs." That was the end of our conversation. We locked in. Uh, they are dinosaurs. Cool. It was a very efficient use of everyone's time. Yeah, the answer is dinosaurs. Yeah, we actually typed in no words to get to that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Round six, question three. In addition to the Narnia Chronicles, C.S. Lewis, who is not Lewis Carroll, authored <laughs> a series of books defending Christianity against detractors. What is the name of this branch of theology, which sounds like it might have originated in Canada? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Is that a legitimate answer? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Do I want to lock in? Yeah, I think yeah, I like yeah. it. Let's lock it in. Okay. We're locked in. So which answer do you want to go with? Yours or mine? <laughs> <sighs> well, I originally said Regina-ism. Right. But. <sighs> yeah, I countered with McMichael. Ba- M- M- you know what? I, I yep. I'm out. It's I not just the words <laughs> on the text, Nick. Mick Maple Baconism. I uh, I would like to propose that we make a character together called Nick Maple Bacon. <laughs> Nick Maple Bacon could be a wonderful character. Yeah, and delicious. Why did you have to make it sexual? I didn't make it sexual. I just said delicious. <laughs> that's that's on you, not on me. So I went to Catholic uh, school for twelve years, and I got nothing on this. Well, name um, just name branches of theology. <laughs> theology, I have no idea. I'm just trying to write down anything remotely Canadian. So Vancouver, Toronto, Quebec, Newfoundland. That kind of sounds like Newfoundism. Uh, Prince Edward, Saskatchewan, Ontario. UConn. I, I I think we have a better shot. I mean, you went to Catholic school for twelve years, and you can't name like a, ecclesiastical. That's a branch of theology. Evangelical is a branch of theology. I feel like it's an ism. It's going to be an ism. Yeah. I don't know. I got nothing. New newfoundism. That's that's the only thing I can think of. Sure. Newfoundism. Ah. 
Sure. Okay. We're going to sound like idiots. Newfoundism. Why Maybe would today be different from any of the other days? <laughs> exactly. So I don't know if our answer is is the right answer, but I do like it. Uh, there are two things about it. First, we went a different direction with a Canadian thing. We took it, we went with it as in the way that Canadians behave as opposed to where they live. Oh, there's, I believe that there's a word for books and other, other written word um, that is intended to defend religion. And the word for that, I think, is apologetics. And they have the reputation for apologizing a lot in Canada. So we said apologetics. Sorry. And Albert, it makes sense that you, that you wouldn't have encountered that branch of theology at a school where you're, you're just kind of assumed to be religious. You don't have to apologize for anything. But yes, it is apologetics. Nice. nice. Oh, that what a, a big one. pull at the end of regulation. <laughs> oh, oh never yeah. Heard never heard of it. Oh. Nope. So... At the end of regulation, Nick and Albert have 145. Lee, Shaz, and Jonathan have 155. Make your wagers. Oh, the gauntlet category is tigers. Tiger, Of course, tigers. Tigers? Yeah, tigers. <laughs> all right. If that's what y'all want. All right, our wagers locked in. Yeah, we're locked in. Albert, category, gauntlet category is tigers. Question number one. Trini Kwan was a television character in a 1990s TV show and 2017 reboot film. She was closely associated with the saber-toothed tiger, and almost everything she wore was what color? We're locked in. Our answer is locked in. Question two. Tiger Beer is a brand produced by Heineken Asia Pacific and is one of the top ten most valuable brands of what sovereign city-state whose name comes from the Sanskrit for Lion City? I paste. Shaz has meow... Freaking meow. So, meow. Rar, rar in this case. <laughs> yeah, we're locked in. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's another Pavlov for me. Yep. He went with uh, Paddington. <laughs> I'm in a. Uh, <laughs> I've been in a beer Zoom group since uh, COVID, and if I got a beer question wrong, I would never hear the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. You know, it, shame is a powerful motivator. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're locked in. Yeah. And question three. Beginning in the 1950s, Tony the Tiger was voiced by what bass voice actor whose most famous work is an uncredited tune from a 1966 Christmas special? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm confident, guys. We could, we could lock that in. Yep, exactly. All right, we're locked in. Uh, uh, is okay. that his? Is, please tell me that's his first name. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Well, then we we are I, not. I, I think I think so. I I would I don't remember I don't <laughs> memorize first names, but I memorize last names. And Ravenscroft is the the voice of Tony the Tiger. Yeah, I'm not I'm not misspelling uh, Thurl there, but yeah. Yeah, no. If that's his first name, then then we're golden. We're we're locked in. Okay. okay. Back to the top. I think you're frosted. Golden, different <laughs> brand. Golden for golden frosted. Those are golden. not great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> what color was almost everything that Trini Kwan wore? Shaz, you had the most confidence. Why don't you enlighten the world as to your answer and why? So there was a lot of clues in the question. The ninety or the twenty seventeen reboot and growing up in the nineties. I think remembering the both the pink and the yellow Power Ranger major part of my my childhood. So I think she's the yellow Power Ranger. <laughs> Trini Kwan. Okay. Aaron, right. are you laughing? Because that's the same conversation we had. Almost identical. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or he remembers it fondly. It was a yeah. part of his childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Amy Johnson, <laughs> solid childhood crush, uh, was the pink power ranger. <laughs> but the answer to the question is yellow. Okay. I thought we locked in with Coldplay, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Beer, top 10 most valuable brands of what sovereign city state? We will start with Nick and Albert. Tiger, I was thinking maybe Thailand and everything else, but really it's it's the city-state part that, that locked it in for me that uh, it was Singapore. So uh, we ended up going with Singapore. Uh, Shazley Jonathan. I know it's a Singaporean beer. I think we locked in before even that you finished the question on the, the city-state <laughs> part, which definitely makes it 100%. Also, by the way, and Shazley Jonathan, that, correct me if I'm wrong, but that sounds just it's like, a, whole like a, a 90s heartthrob. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> Right, like a rom-com lead. 
<laughs> She's actually a representative is, from Virginia's fifth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Shawsley is almost like an adjective. Right. It's like, oh, there's Shawsley <laughs> Jonathan again. Good Lord. <laughs> Why does it have to be negative? <laughs> you know, that's a good point. Oh, there's Shawsley Jonathan. Look at that. Hey, oh, look at Shawsley over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are looking particularly Shawsley today. <laughs> Question number three. Who voiced Tony the Tiger beginning in the 1950s? Nick and Albert. We we both were like, oh, man, we definitely know this. It's super easy. And then I said Ravenscroft, and he said it's thorough, right? And then we panicked. Or at least <laughs> I panicked. Because we had two totally different answers that we were both very strongly yeah. in favor of. Then we came to the, re- uh, the realization that uh, it's Thurl Ravenscroft. Thurl is his first name. Ravenscroft is his last name. <laughs> so we were much less terrified uh, when we worked that out. And that's what we went with, Ravenscroft. Amazing. Other group? We avoided having any kind of panic by actually providing both parts of the name at the same time. Uh, we also went with Thurl Ravenscroft. You guys had identical answers, so there's no point in reordering these for suspense. Trini Kwan was the Yellow Ranger. Woo! Is Yay. it racist? We're not sure. Pro- yes. Probably. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's a really, yes. really 100%. good point. Yeah, she could have been 100. the Pink Ranger. Could have been. And yeah. yet. Wait, re- remind me again, what color uh, was, was the black guy? Uh, what ranger was he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, was he black? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. What about the White Ranger? <laughs> right. What was the White mm. Ranger again? Yeah, what no color was the White Ranger? <laughs> was there a White Ranger? <laughs> he yeah. became the Green Ranger, but yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. Tiger Beer is one of the top 10 most valuable brands of the city state of Singapore. Nice. And beginning in the 1950s, Tony the Tiger was voiced by Thurl Ravenscroft. So it comes nice. down to wagers. Which is exciting. We're going to let Nick and Albert tell us what you wagered first. Oh, Albert, it doesn't bode well from us that she went to us first because that's how yeah. she builds the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Quit metagaming, Nick. <laughs> so, as I say in every episode that I'm on, I have a very, very solid strategy. All or nothing. As to how I bet. Albert, how did we bet? <laughs> i uh, told nick whatever you want i hate wagering so champions bet zero we did not bet zero we bet 143 oh my lord oh boy uh, nick and i have the same approach to betting which is i don't know what do you think so when we play on a team together we just stare at each other until someone spits out a number <laughs> we really we played together a couple of weeks ago and i think that was the longest period of time there's ever been a debate on the wager where neither right. of us said a single word we were just debating on who was going to make the other person do it. And uh, Shazli and Jonathan, what did you guys wager? So I, I was wrong about something. I, I told them if we go with an aggressive wager that that it means we have to get it right to win. But with the way that they wagered, we could have missed it and still won if they missed it too, which would have been great. We wagered uh, 136 for a grand total right. of 291. Yep, according Woo! to the, the the math widget I have here in front of me, uh, Jonathan Shaz and Lee had 291. Nick and Albert had 288, which is delightful. What a come from behind <laughs> victory. We were trailing wow. since wow. Honeysuckle. Mm-hmm. Got well, the last, question, the last right. question right. The kudzu curse is lifted. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That is fantastic. What a great game. And I'm, Aaron, this is one of the things I've said to you before. Um, I love your question writing. It's the clues, the way that you put clues in. I really, really enjoy your questions. And I think that was on display today. You did a great job hosting this game. Thank you. Y'all were fun to play with. All right. Well, before we go, we like to give everybody a chance to do shout outs and promote causes that they care about. We will start with our winners. Uh, Lee, let's start with you. I'll just say, I know it's said here often, adopt, don't shop. I have a dog who she's usually such a knucklehead and she's been quiet this whole time, which is amazing. Aww. I really was expecting to have to mute, but you know, if you can visit your local shelter, pick up a cat, pick up a dog, give him a love at home. Love that. All right, Shaz, over to you. Uh, I just wanted to shout out the people of Iran that are still fighting for their freedom. Even as it fades from the news here, it's still ongoing for them. And I think it's hard to comprehend you know, 40 years of living in under an authoritarian regime, 
when it's easy to take for granted what we have in the United States. But uh, I really hope they get to taste something similar someday soon. That would be amazing. And Albert, over to you. Uh, well, first, I'd like to uh, to promote my uh, my brother's podcast. He does a podcast for the city of Pasadena called uh, the Crown City Podcast. Even if you live in Pasadena, live in the L.A. area, or just want to know how a city kind of works, he has guests, including the former mayor of Pasadena, a couple of uh, city council members, uh, local business people, all that. It's a really great little podcast. It's not like an hour long listening to like, you know, him reading a, a loud uh, next door post. It's actually a little bit more interactive than that. But I highly encourage that. And the other thing I would recommend is this support group that I'm a part of called Sad Dads Club. Uh, my wife and I lost our son, Augie, in uh, July to uh, to being stillborn. Mm. And it's a group that uh, gets together. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Gets together a couple times a month now. They've been incredibly resourceful. They're a really good group of guys. So if you find yourself in the sad, same sad situation, it's the best, worst club there is. Um, I highly recommend you looking up the Sad Dads Club on, on um, Instagram. They're on Facebook. They have a website as well. And uh, yeah, if you need the support, please, we're there, and, and we'd be uh, happy to have you. Absolutely. I think that's um, it's a good call out, and absolutely sorry for your loss. That's Don't wish it on anybody. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Well, that's, that's a that's a... A downturn in the tone to wrap up. Now I have to sound excited again. It's like, uh, okay. Re -re Review the score again. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, hey, final score is 291, 288. No. All right. So, That's well, that another is. Another win for Jonathan, right? It's been a long time since I've said that because I, I don't win by myself ever anymore. But that is going to wrap us up. So for Lee, for Shaws, for Albert, for Nick, and for Aaron, my name is Jonathan. This has been episode number 410 of Trivial Warfare. We're already 10% of the way from 400 to 500. It, it goes That's terrifying. fast. It goes yeah. real so we should start, fast. We should start scheduling episode 500 like now. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. In fact, we should like record 500 next week and just put <laughs> it in the can. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been another episode of Trivial Warfare where it is not just trivia. It's war. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Trivial Warfare. Be sure to check out the revamped TrivialWarfare.com as your one-stop shop to submit questions, join the community, and get access to over 150 archived episodes. Warm It Up was written and performed by Matthew Stevens. This episode was edited and produced by me, Joel Sharpton. For help with your podcast, visit ProPodcastingServices.com. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Trivial Warfare. We are the podcast that takes the pub out. Nope, we don't take the pub out of anything. Let me Where try that again. Like I'm trying to be I'm <laughs> trying to be higher energy because the song that comes in with the intro is like a high energy song, and then I come and I'm like, Hello and welcome back to Trivial Warfare. <laughs> I'm here to put you to sleep. All right, let's try again. Here we go. I do want one of these times for you to say the thing that's always in my head when I hear you saying this spiel, which is like, if you want more trivial warfare, you can't have it. It's mine. I'm keeping it away from you. That just, doesn't seem like it's good for business. <laughs> it's bad for business, <laughs> mm. but it makes me laugh every time I think about you saying that. <laughs> if, if you want more trivial warfare, tough. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it goes over very well, honestly. <laughs> I forget. Do I give the answers now or later? Later, later. right? Later. Third time. Okay. Through. I've it's I haven't hosted since last year. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you all. It's your excuse for They're everything. Off. This is so bad. And will be until at least February. Can we <laughs> go back to the Scotch thing? Because I don't know. I don't understand. Rusty nail sounds like the cocktail. Is Rusty nail the Scotch? Yeah, Scotch and Jambu is a Rusty nail. That's the cocktail. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. I'm I'm still confused. I, I'm confused about the wording. And oh, so yeah. the way that I was taking the question, what I thought you were asking was, what is the name of the brand of scotch that you use to make a Drambuie? Oh, no, Drambuie is a liquor. Drambuie is whiskey. Drambuie is its whiskey. own liquor. So when you said yes. the scotch yeah. in Drambuie, scotch and Drambuie. That, not in. That's and. why I clarified, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, no, I never even understood 
that part of the question at all. Okay, I got you now. I got you now. Jonathan, I think both okay. you and me just heard a completely separate question and went down this like <laughs> rabbit hole that has nothing to do with what we were supposed yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it didn't have the plant part, didn't have the, the cocktail part. Now I'm two part scotch, I'm... one part drambuie. Yeah. That is a rusty nail. Okay, gotcha <laughs> now. Gotcha. Okay.